Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you find yourself today. I am Carol C.C. Miller, your positive life strategist, peace activator, and global hugger, coming to you with another episode of Embrace Your Life Chat, where the intention is to heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows on um, with a positive focus. So I'm here Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. Chicago time. That is where I am at. Please let me know in comments um, where you're joining me from. And also let me know if you're new to the community because I enjoy being able to welcome in newbies as well as um, saying hello to, to the regulars. While you're only seeing me here, it is a community chat. And I love the fact that generally speaking, any Tuesday or Thursday, there's people from all over the world who are joining us to help heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows. So with that said, I do like to do a couple of house cleaning tips. One is I'm not an absolutist. I'm not a big fan of the words always, never, right, wrong, good or bad. There are 7 billion people on this planet. I can't begin to say what's always right for 7 billion people. So I work on most of the time, the majority of the time. Zero being always negative, 100 being always positive. I don't know anybody at zero and I don't know anybody at the 100. So my personal practice, which I've been doing daily for many, many years, is to be in the 80 to 100 percent of the time, positive, loving, kind, compassionate and peaceful. Those are my top values to work with. What does that mean? 20 percent of the time, I'm not that. I would say I'm probably in the 90 percent mostly, but fear visits me, frustration, disappointment, anger, um, unworthiness, all of our normal feelings that we have visit me. But because of my daily practices, they visit and don't move in. Secondly, I'm a coach. I love supporting people and living their best life, whatever that looks like. I am not a counselor, nor am I a therapist. And sometimes to live your best life, having that type of support is what's going to help you get there. I believe you're worthy of living your best life. So whether it's working with me as a coach, um, getting counseling or therapy or whatever it is, I encourage you to build your support system so you're able to live your best life um, today. So that is what I want to get out of the way. I'm going to jump in really quick and say hello to everybody before we go into today's topic. If you have questions about today's actual topic, please add them in. You don't know the topic yet, so you don't know if you have questions. But also, if you have something that you would like me to bring a little bit more love, kindness, compassion, or peace to, and positivity to, you can put that in the comments, and I will consider it for a future um, episode. Hey, Brian, good to see you. Hello, Dee. Um, there's somebody with a different language saying hello. I apologize. I do not know how to read that, but welcome. It's good to have you here. Melissa, hello, Ellen. I haven't seen you for a while. Terry and Sadiq. Um, I hope I am saying that name right as well. So again, please know that even though you're just seeing me, this is a community effort. So um, ask questions in there in the comments and I will get, get to them after I have the discussion for today. Then I'll come back and check out your comments and things like that. So today's topic is um, what are you giving your attention to most of the time? Again, please keep in mind when you're here with positive focus at least, it's not all the time. It's not always never right, wrong. It's what are you doing most of the time? What are you doing the majority of the time? As mentioned before, disappointment, frustration, anger, all of those things visit me. But because it's important to me to live by my values, I am most of the time positive. I am most of the time loving, kind, compassionate, peaceful. So I am not that all the time. So that's what I practice myself. So today I want to talk about what are you giving your attention to? Are you giving your attention to the things you want in your life? Or are you giving your attention to the things that you don't want in your life? And when the don't wants are right in front of you, you're experiencing a challenging time in your life right now, perhaps, it's really easy to focus your full attention on the don't want. Again, it's not a right or wrong. It's where you're at and where do you want to be. So if something's really hard right now, it may take you a little bit more um, practice and more awareness to focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. But it is possible. So we're going to talk about that today. I like to come up with a word. We define it. We come up with an affirmation around it and then some tips to make um, to allow it to be part of your daily practices. If you choose it to be, 
I can share tips that have worked for me and my clients. I cannot make you nor would I want to make you try them. I encourage you to try them. If it's something that sounds possible for you, I would love for you to try it out and then keep me posted. But in my work, there is never, never, um, I can't imagine a time that I would ever tell somebody they had to do something. So it's really about what's right for you, where you're at, and where you want to be. So uh, with that in mind, attention is the word for the, today. The definition is the act or state of applying the mind to something. So again, we're giving our attention, our mindful thoughts to something. Are we giving our attention to what we want and what we want to grow into and what we want more of? Are we giving our attention to fear? Are we giving our attention to what we don't want and what we're afraid of and um, don't want to experience? Fear is not bad. Anger is not bad. Um, disappointment, frustration, none of them are bad. It's how much time, energy, and attention do you want to give to them? So that's something to think about. A lot of times fear allows us to realize this doesn't feel good. So it's kind of a barometer, so to speak. And then we get to choose or not choose. We get to stay in fear if, if we need to or want to. But we can choose from there to have a better feeling thought. So the, again, the word is attention, the act or state of applying the mind to something. So I really encourage you to go through your day today and moving forward possibly, just asking yourself, not judging it where you're at, but what are you focused on most of the time during your day? Are you focused again on most of what you do want or what you don't want? And even if you're focused on the don't wants, which happens, are you focused on the don't wants from a blame, shame, complain um, attitude? Or are you focusing on the don't wants on the how can I make this better? What kind of solutions can I come up with to move into the do wants? So again, the don't wants aren't wrong or bad. It's just what are you going to do with them and how are you going to feel to move forward? So our affirmation today is I am focused on feeling Then I want you to fill in the blank. What is it that you're focused on? Are you focused on, or what is it that you want? Maybe not even focused yet on it, but you want to feel content. You want to feel peaceful. You want to feel happy. You want to feel joyful. You want to be doing a certain job or living in a certain place. Where are you focused on? What is your focus? I am focused on feeling content. I am focused on feeling peaceful. I am focused on feeling happy, joyful. What is it that you want to focus on? And again, an affirmation is simply a statement. It's not positive or negative. It can be positive and it can be negative. So we're focused on positive affirmations that work for you. So for an example, today you've woke up in a bad mood. Um, you got some bad feedback from a colleague or a boss and you're just not in a good mood and maybe you're angry right now. So I've now asked you to say, I'm focused on feeling calm. Well, if you're in a space of anger, and I say, I'm focused on feeling, like for myself, if I'm angry and then I say, I'm focused on feeling calm, no, I'm not. I'm focused on my anger right now. Again, it's not right or wrong. It's just where I am in this moment. So you want your affirmation to be believable, even if it's a stretch. So if, if I'm in a state of anger right now, it might be I'm in the process of focusing on feeling calm. I'm in the process of being calm. But if I'm in anger and I try to tell myself I'm calm, I'm probably going to immediately say, no, I'm not. So you want it to be believable. And again, remember, we're talking the majority of the time. Some people might be able to be in a state of anger and say, I'm focused on being calm and allow that to bring them back into a calm space. It's what works for you with where you're at in the moment. So I would love to hear from you guys um, in comments. What are you focused on feeling? If you're in a space of anxiety right now, where do you want to focus your attention? So it might be, I'm in the process of feeling calmer, or you might be in a space where you can say, I am focused on calm. I'm focused on contentment. I'm in the process of feeling contented. Just know where you're at. It's not right or wrong. It's where you're at and where do you want to be? So I'd love to know what you're um, intending and giving attention to today with your affirmations. And then for tips, Awareness, uh, it's not always my first one that I say, but it is one that I use a lot or knowing your feelings. When you're aware, 
of what you're focusing on, when you're aware of how you feel, when you're aware of your environment, then you are in the driver's seat. You're able to shift and change into a different direction if you want. You're able to stay in that space because you're aware of it. And maybe right now you need to feel angry. And again, anger is not a wrong thing to feel. It's how much time, energy, and attention do you want to give it. But if, when you're aware of how you feel, you're in the driver's seat to make changes. When you're on autopilot and life is living you, you are not living your life. So when you're an autopilot and you're angry, you're probably just spewing, not even realizing what's going on because you're just going through the motions of it. Be in awareness throughout your day and that's gonna help you adjust to what you need to adjust to. I mean, again, it doesn't mean that you're in anger. It's like, oh, I have to be in joy. It means I'm in anger right now. I need to feel this, whether I need to feel it for five minutes or five hours, this is where I'm at. And when I'm ready to feel a little bit better, I will take steps to feel a little bit better. But your awareness allows you to make those decisions. Then the next one is to redirect or reframe. So if you are giving your attention to something you don't want in your life, then you can either redirect it. Like if it's really got a, a hold of you right now and the thought of reframing it, and I'll explain the reframe in a moment, but redirect would be, I'm going to think of something completely different. Right now, this particular project I'm working on is really hard. It's taking, um, I'm not coming up with solutions. It's making me frustrated. I can't get into a space in that moment to make it better. So I'm going to redirect my attention to something completely different. So I'm going to shift away from what's making me frustrated, what's making me angry, what's making me sad, what's making me lonely, whatever it is, it's feeling less than, I'm going to redirect it into something that I do feel more comfortable, more confident about. And then reframing is this project is frustrating me right now. I'm really disappointed. It's not working out the way I want it to, but I, I'm in a space that I can see possibility in it. So I'm going to reframe instead of saying, I'm really stressed out right now. I might reframe it in <clears throat> that right now it's like, I'm not focusing on what I want to focus on in the project. So I'm still able to see possibility in my frustration, if that makes sense. If I'm frustrated and I cannot see possibility, I'm moving to redirect. If I'm frustrated and I can see possibility, then I might reframe it to make it a little bit more gentle to be able to work in that space still. Neither are better or worse than the other. It's just where you are. So when you're really frustrated or really angry, I encourage you to shift your attention. Maybe maybe watch a, a puppy or kitten video on online or something that will put you back into a calmer space. So those are um, two important ones. And then to use your affirmations, whatever you have chosen that you're going to give yourself um, attention to, when you notice that you're giving the opposite attention, go back to your affirmation. I am focused on um, being peaceful. And you're right now, I'm frustrated. I'm angry or whatever, that's not peaceful. But because of your awareness, you realize that's not peaceful. So you can go back into the, I'm going to focus on peacefulness. I am at peace uh, and make it to be believable for you. Because again, if you're in that space where you can't redirect whatever's going on, that's less than your affirmation is going to need to fit that too. And it would probably be, I'm in the process of. And then lastly, be gentle with yourself through this. I, I, again, most of us are our own worst enemies and we tend to say things to ourselves that we would not say to our friends. So know that you're doing the best you can with where you're at, with what you have, and you're working in small steps to feel a little bit better. Can you go from anger to joy in a nanosecond? Sure. I don't think the majority of us can. I think there are steps to get there. So that's, again, a reason that I'm not a big fan of always or never. Can some people shift that quickly? Absolutely. I believe most of us need to pay attention, be aware, and take those small steps. Tends to be for me when I'm doing the small steps towards something, it's more sustainable than when I go from A to Z. It might last for a little bit, but when I make it a daily practice to follow what I want in my life, which is love, kindness, compassion, peace, and positivity, 
those are my values to live my life from. Again, I'm not in that space all the time, but I am in that space the majority of the time. So ask yourself, who do you want to be and how do you want to show up for you in your life? And what do you want to give your attention to? I did not add in here and I should have. <laughs> um, giving your attention to what you want does not mean ignoring what you don't want. Because ignoring something, it tends to stick around until it's seen and heard. But it is about bringing compassion, bringing kindness to the don't want. So you can look at it in a solutions base rather than looking at it in a blame, shame, complain base. Um, so that's what I have for you today. Uh, boy, it, today's went a lot quicker than I was expecting it to, which is good because I have a hard cut off at noon. I'm going to come into comments and then I do, of course, want to um, mention something else too. So let's see. Um, Melissa Ellen, yes. Um, there's a Facebook user, which means they are in my Embrace Your Life community. Um, I would love for people to join in there. It's a small group and it's easier to see people there. Hi, Steve. And hello, Kate. Good to see you, Kathy. I try to stay in the now moment and staying in the constant state of healing energy. Carla, that's beautiful. And I would encourage you to be gentle with yourself when you're not in that space because my guess is it's going to happen. So I know for myself, I'll just use that as an example. I've been doing this for a very long time. And as I mentioned earlier, we tend to be our worst enemies. So when I go, when I allow fear to run the show, I can easily beat myself up over it. Like Carol, you've been doing this, you coach on this, this is your livelihood. Why are you allowing fear to run the show? Well, guess what? When I'm feeding the energy of the fear, I'm letting it grow. So if I step back into being gentle with myself, reminding myself, oh, guess what? You're human too. And then go into what do I want rather than what I don't want. I can shift back into the what I do want quicker. Depending on what you're going through. Remember, I said I'm a coach. I'm not a counselor or therapist. So sometimes you need that support to make that shift too. So um I just want people to know there's not a right or wrong way to do it. It's what feels right for you. I'm focused on feeling abundant and joyful. I love that one. I am physically feeling tired but content. Emotionally, I'm feeling whole, loved, and positive. I am focusing on healing myself as I have been physically unwell. I am giving myself time to reframe to rest. I love that, Carla. And as far as, you know, our bodies sometimes aren't feeling well, and sometimes it's our mental health isn't feeling well. So being gentle with yourself and taking the appropriate steps for you to feel a little bit better is an excellent way to maneuver through this beautiful and messy life we live. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic addict and I have been doing this for a long time. Well done, Carla. Well done. I choose peace, love, joy, inspired action, prosperity. Love it, Ellen. And Wilbur, Louisiana is in the house. So speaking of Louisiana, I'm going to quickly mention, because I, I actually had this conversation last night. Shocking, Ellen, that we are on the same page with that. Um, I do want to mention, I have got my Global Free Hub event back in September 9th through the 11th. And for those of you who are new or even relatively new, because I have not done it for two years because of COVID, I started doing free hugs in 2008 here in Chicago. It turned out to be twice a month um, until COVID. And so then in 2008, I also started doing global free hugs. And we've had hubbers on six continents. Oh, goodness. I need to be able to remember these statistics. Um, six continents, 45 countries, and 32 U.S. states. So we're doing it again September 9th through 11th. And the entire intention is to be able to be I'm seen by people, let people know that they matter in this world and to love up this world because I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure um, we could all use a little bit more love, kindness, compassion, peace, and hugs in our life. So I highly encourage you to um, consider signing up in your community. I will share the link on how to do so and it gives you, um, explains what you would need to do in order to um, become a global hugger and obviously I want everybody to follow their community guidelines on COVID too. But I do want to mention who we have signed up for this year. And it's, usually I do it the first weekend in May, but I, I was pretty confident that May of 2022 is going to be too soon with COVID. So right now I have three continents, five countries, and 12 U.S. states signed up. 
continents are Asia, Europe, and North America. Um, I have yet to have Antarctica join me. So if anybody knows anybody from Antarctica, I think it's winter there though. So I'm not sure there's a lot of people there. Um, countries, Canada, England, Miramar, Switzerland, and the U.S. Um, U.S. states, Alabama, Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Hawaii, Illinois, Louisiana, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, and Tennessee. I will share that link too. And if you see a yes behind their name, it means that they would love if you're in their community area um, for you to join them on their global hug event too. So in Asia, it is, I, I hope I say his name right, Yehan, and he will be offering hugs in Yangon. In Europe, Stephanie will be in um, Rosendale, England. In Switzerland, Yago, and he's been hugging with me for many, many years. He hugs on his own in Switzerland as well. Um, he will be hugging in Geneva, Luz Lausanne, and Sion. And in the UK, Carla will be hugging at her store in Bishop Storford Hertz. And in um, Canada, we have three provinces right now, Cindy in Kiwana, British Columbia, Wanda in Simcoe, Ontario, Melanie in Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke <laughs> Quebec, and in the US, Molly, Huntsville, Alabama, D'Amato in Lake Havasso City, Arizona, Aaron in Fort Collins, Colorado, Rachel in East Hartford, Connecticut, BJ in Honolulu, Hawaii, yours truly in Chicago, Illinois, Loretta, who's also been a longtime hugger um, in New Orleans, Allie in Sydney, New York, Gail in Cary, North Carolina, Gina, who has been a longtime global hugger um, in Cleveland, Ohio, Paul, who has been a longtime global hugger, Portland, Oregon, and Gemma in Knoxville, Tennessee. So I'm going to post um, those links for you to hopefully join me. And if I was not a hugger when I started. I promise you that it scared me to no end. And it really has changed my life. So I encourage you to consider it. And I would love it if you would share the link with people, other friends that you have to um, help love up this world. So let me check here. Um, well, I'll say that again. Carla, I would love to say that again, but I don't know what I said. Um, I actually, yeah. So I'm checking to see. I don't think I've missed any comments, but if I have, I do come back later in the day to check to make sure I didn't miss any because sometimes I don't see them until later in the day. So that is what I have for you today. Please consider becoming a global hugger. Um, again, that link will show you. It will explain what you need to do, and I would love to have you um, involved. If for some reason hugging strangers, which again was not something I was comfortable with when I first did it, is not something you are ready to try, even hugging your family and sending pictures. It's really about loving up this world one hug at a time that weekend. And then I will share pictures to, to show all the love that is going on around the world that weekend as well. So that is what I have for you today. Next week is the first Tuesday, Thursday. So um, Tuesday will be Paul Savanio joining me and we'll be doing the work of Byron Katie to help release stress. It's a really great process to help you um, de-stress the thoughts that you might be having that are holding you back. And then Thursday, we're talking with Shauna Fisher about animal communication because our pets are so important to our own happiness in our life. So she is able to tap into the energy of your pet here and those gone to give you a little bit of comfort and help along the way. So I hope you join me next week, Tuesday, Thursday at 1130. If you have topics you want me to cover to bring a little bit more love, kindness, compassion, peace, and positivity to whatever you're going through, um, please put it in comments. And if it's something I feel like I can contribute to, I will add that into a future um, conversation as well. So I think I've got everyone covered for today. And I did it under 30 minutes. Amazing, because I can usually chat, chat, chat. Oh, yay, Carla will sign up. Wonderful. Um, yes, Brian, have a great week too. Oh, and you do pet rescue. Wonderful. Well, um, I hope you do come on Thursday then and talk to, to Shauna about um, the, the pet rescue. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you all take care of yourselves. Be gentle with yourselves and be gentle with those around you, knowing 
the majority of people are doing the best that they can with what they have. So take care, be kind, be loving, be peaceful, be compassionate, be positive, and we'll talk next week. So until then, remember you matter. You matter to me, you matter to the world, and most, most, most importantly, you matter to you. So long for now.